Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be creating a simulation where our solar system is going to be a little bit different. It's going to have a black hole and it's going to have a sun and we're going to see what happens to our planet Earth. Let's discover what all of this will create and welcome to What The Math. You may have already seen the episode from Vsauce uh, from about, I guess, a year ago, where he actually replaced our sun with a black hole and simulated what would actually happen to our solar system. And if you know enough physics, you know that nothing will happen to our solar system, everything will actually still maintain the same course. The only difference is that things will get a little bit colder. Because there is no more sunlight, our planet Earth, within about a few months' time, will actually turn into an ice ball and will eventually be plunged in eternal darkness and receive no energy from anything whatsoever. Now, in this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different and actually create a binary system. And I wanted to see what would happen to Earth if we were in a binary system where one of the objects is, once again, a black hole. So, in other words, we're going to be creating a custom system with a sun and a black hole and, of course, our planet Earth. So first of all, let's actually create a new simulation here. And we're going to take our beautiful sun and we're going to place it right here in the middle. So this is going to be the center. But because we want to have a black hole here, I'm going to basically just choose a black hole that has exactly the same mass and place them in a binary orbit. Now, for them to actually not really influence each other too much, in other words, for the black hole not to destroy our sun, we have to place it relatively far away because if I don't place it far away, if I actually place it just somewhere here, watch what's going to happen. So I'll just decrease time here a little bit. It's going to, unfortunately, shred our sun relatively quickly due to the tremendously powerful tidal effects uh, coming from the black hole. And the, the fact that the sun is now experiencing really large tidal effects. So here with the black hole very, very close to the sun, the sun will now be experiencing a lot of tidal effects and will basically get shredded apart by this black hole. So we don't want this to happen. We're going to place them farther away. Uh, and we're going to start it by placing them at a, at a distance of about 0.1 astronomical unit or about a third of a distance of Mercury to the sun, tenth of a distance of Earth to the sun. So let's take the sun, let's take the black hole and give them a balanced binary orbit at a distance of approximately um, one, no, sorry, 14 million kilometers. So here I have to make sure that I get the numbers right. I think that's around here. Let's, let's go with 15. That's more accurate. And once we place them into orbit around one another, they're going to start kind of circling in a relatively perfect circle around each other. I believe a single orbit here takes approximately uh, three days, or I guess it's more than three days. Okay, so let, let's let's check. We, we can go into the motion here, and uh, oh, okay, it's eight point two days. Interesting. It's a lot more than I imagined it would be. And so now, what we're missing from this picture is planets. Now, if I were to just place planets by essentially clicking on the on this button here it would unfortunately create objects that would be in orbit uh, with orbital speeds that are typical to our solar system. But because we have a lot more mass here, this would mean that the actual system would fall apart pretty quickly. In other words, watch what happens. So just creating a typical solar system would not give these uh, planets enough velocity to maintain stable orbit. And some of them will come too close to the black hole slash sun binary system, like for example, Mercury here, and might end up getting kicked out or even swallowed completely. So let's see what happens to Mercury. And okay, looks like, uh, looks like, yeah, it left the solar system. Same thing might happen to Venus and Earth. So we don't want that. We want them to actually have velocities necessary to maintain stable orbit. So for this, we have to do a little bit of math, but I'm going to do this behind the scenes. As a matter of fact, I'm actually just going to use a typical online orbit calculator to find out how much velocity a planet needs to orbit around two masses of sun. 
and since I've already done the calculations before, the answer is about 41.1, or I guess 0.2 kilometers per second. And here, one thing I also want to have is a berry center, so I'm going to create a berry center between these two objects, and it's going to be right in the middle, just so I can actually measure distance more precisely. We want this to be about one astronomical unit away from the berry center, not specifically from any of the other objects. And that's around here. Very, very close. There we go. No, almost there. Here we go. And uh, so as you can see, the current speed is very, very, very low because it's actually orbiting around the berry center. And we want this to increase. We want this to be much, much higher. So we're going to go into the settings for our planet Earth and change the value for speed to be about 41.123 kilometers per second. Uh, a normal speed, uh, or I guess the speed of Earth right now in our solar system is about 29, or close to about 30 kilometers per second, but this has to be increased to 41 because there is actually two masses of the sun in the skies now. All right, so uh, this should be enough for Earth to have a relatively perfect circular orbit around these two objects. And interestingly, what you can see right away is that the way that the Sun orbits around the black hole means that anyone observing this from Earth would see Sun move a little bit more across the skies than it should. And also, we wouldn't really see the black hole itself. It's too tiny, actually. It's only about um, three kilometers in radius. So in comparison to the Sun's 700,000 kilometer radius, it would be just a speck of light coming another light of darkness coming in front of the sun. So we wouldn't really see any difference, but we would feel the difference. And you're going to see how we would feel this difference um, in a few minutes. The way we would feel this difference is through temperature. So here I need to actually accelerate this for you, us to start feeling the effects. And basically what you're going to start noticing soon is how the temperature will actually start changing. And that's because as you can see from this picture, once in a while sun is a little bit closer to the Earth, and uh, sometimes on, on this side here, it's a little bit farther away. So every four days or so, the Earth receives slightly more or slightly less um, infrared radiation, basically heat. And so it heats up or cools down a little bit different from how a typical Earth would, would actually heat up or cool down. So let's run this for maybe a year or so, or maybe a couple of years, just to see how the actual climate changes here as well. So I'm going to change the parameters for this graph. We want this to actually show things in a little bit more detail. And as you can see, uh, the temperature has started to actually drop, although maybe not. It's, it's down to about 12.4 degrees Celsius from the average of about 15. But this is only just the beginning. It's, it hasn't been a year yet. So we're going to wait for this. I'm going to actually just let it run for a little bit just to find out where the temperature will end up after maybe three, four, or let's say five years and how the climate on the planet will actually change as well. We're, we're basically are going to go into the planetary uh, view here. And now we're just going to be watching the planet from this perspective just to see how everything changes here. So this is, I guess, the Asian continent with a little bit of Australia showing as well. So let's run this and see what happens. And so about four years later, this is what's been happening to our planet Earth. Basically, it's slowly turning into a nice ball yet again. You can see the temperature every year is decreasing and is slowly falling uh, lower and lower. Uh, there's also, if you actually look at individual uh, fluctuations here, about every four days it goes up and down. They're kind of a little bit hard to see here, so I need to actually increase this to about maybe half a year. And so these little projections you see here, that's the increase due to the distance of the sun, or I guess the increase and decrease. These fluctuations are caused by the fact that uh, the sun is sometimes closer and sometimes uh, 
farther away from us. Now, why is it that it's actually falling to such a low number though? Why is it at 5 degrees Celsius already, which is 10 degrees Celsius cooler than it used to be when we just started a simulation and 10 degrees cooler than in the actual Earth, even though, as you can see, the orbit is almost a perfect circle. And the reality is that it is actually due to these orbital fluctuations that are created by the black hole. As you can see, uh, so typical Earth is in orbit around the edge of the habitable zone here. So it's in a slightly warmer region. But because of these fluctuations, this new Earth is now spending quite a lot of time in, in this region which is a little bit cooler than the region it was in before. And so over time, the temperature on Earth here slightly drops by like a decimal point. And with time, this will add up to several degrees and possibly even go below zero because Earth will slowly keep cooling down unless we place it in a different part of the orbit. So it's basically due to these fluctuations where the habitable zone is actually shifted uh, leaving Earth in a slightly cooler region than it would be in otherwise. So to solve this, I would have to place Earth a little bit closer to the binary system, and it would then actually start receiving a little bit more heat, and would most likely average out around 15 degrees again, but the actual temperature drop and rise would still be quite significant, because as you can see from the graph here, the actual temperature goes up and down by uh, quite a big margin, uh, with every single orbit of a black hole around the Sun. And so this is kind of what would happen to Earth if it was orbiting around a binary Sun-black hole system, and this is kind of what would happen to the temperature on Earth as well. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about our solar system and binary systems as well, and can possibly recreate this yourself in Universe Sandbox if you wanted to. Because normally it's actually kind of hard to create a binary system unless you know the specific value for the velocity that you need to add to it. So if I were to just add Mercury here in orbit around these objects, it would actually, as you can see, just fly away. Simply because, oh, and it might even collide with Earth. No, we got lucky. But this is simply because the game doesn't actually calculate binary orbits very realistically, um, and you do have to do it manually. Anyway, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and potentially consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.